good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another exciting day of mathematics. Woo -woo. Warm up number seven's on the screen, uh, and they're all well. Number one, simplify, and numbers two and three are solve. That shouldn't take you more than about five, six minutes. And I'm just giving you a heads up. Today we're moving on, and it's going to get a little bit uh, funner by the minute. So make sure uh, you stay focused. And today we're going to make an attempt to use our Chromebook. So hopefully. Uh, that's going to work out really well. So let's get that done, please. I'll give you some time. Copy and go. All right. So let's see what we got. Number one. Uh, Angel, what'd you get for number one? Negative 2x minus 2y. What else? Plus one. Uh, So, uh, hands, have you got something like that in any order for right now, in any order? Yeah. All right. Uh, number two. What'd you get for number two? Double check with your neighbor just to make sure that you got something, because I'm going to call you right now. Number two. What'd you get for number two? Let's see, how about um, William? Negative 13, hands up, you got that? That is incorrect. <laughs> who, who got x equals negative 13? What? The other one was an expression, wasn't it? Number three. Uh, Yolani, what's our common denominator? Twi oh, 24. All right, 24. We distribute. That is negative 24 over 3x plus 48 over 4, greater than or, oh, that's a greater than 96 over 24. If I simplify, this is negative 8x plus 12 greater than 4. Continue, Madison. Go. Subtract 12 from both sides, we end up with negative 8x uh, greater than negative 8. Hands have you got up to right there? Okay, good. Uh, how about uh, Elijah? Continue. Negative 8 to both sides, and what do we get at the end? Hands, if you got that, that is correct. Tell your neighbor why we flip the inequality symbol, please. Yeah. All right, double check your work, please, because uh, like I said, um, we're getting closer and closer to moving into the Algebra 2 portion, but at the end of this review section, we're going to have a cumulative half party. Let's go. Yeah, we good? Anyways, here we go. Uh, agenda for today, warm-up number seven, compound inequality. And your home play for tonight is only eight problems, only. All right. Now check this out. Um, there's going to be some days like today that I'm going to give you a code for Nearpod. Not for here for class, but for home. You're going to write it underneath your agenda. Okay, so like that you have that code so that when you get home, you type that in, log in, and that's how you're going to access your home plate. Okay? All right, here we go. Uh, so warm-up number seven, compound inequalities, and you have eight problems uh, solving inequalities for home play. Code, write this code down, please. Z N Q E P. Z N Q E P. Z N Q E P. So now check this out. When you're at home, you get home, you're like, oh, I'm going to do my home play. All right. So then you get your Chromebook, 
log into nearpod.com. Then you're going to type in that code when it, where it says to uh, access lesson or access or join session. And then to write your name, I want you to start off with your period number and then your name. So you're going to write the number two first and then your full name. Now let me tell you why. I have close to 170 students. So when I get the reports from Nearpod, like that I know I go by period and it shows me with that first number at the front. Okay? So once again, two and then your number. Got it? Yes, that's a cute. All right. Your home plate from last night was only four problems. Hold on to that. Okay? Some of you are like, oh, yes. Well, no, because we're going to turn it in a little bit. Uh, tonight's home plate, check this out. It's only eight problems, only. No, uh, you're going to do that at home, didn't I say? You're going to go home, type in nearpod.com, then you're going to type in the code, and then you, you forward the slides until you get to this one, and then you start working. Now, don't copy them all. Copy one, work it out. Copy two, work it out, and so on and so forth. Okay? All right. So with that said, just a quick recap. We started last week with inequalities and equations. So we said equations is when it's balanced. Inequality is when it's not balanced. Or equations, when it's balanced. When it's not balanced, meaning that they're not equal, they're inequalities. Today we're going to continue with that. Okay? Also, um, we started with our session with I can solve one variable equation in inequality. So turn your paper, and I want you to get a Cornell note ready, please. Uh, copy the objector at the bottom left. Give you some time for that. All right, so uh, our objective for today, I can solve one variable equations and inequalities. We're still on the same concept. I want to make sure that we uh, leave uh, this section well and, and, and well uh, reviewed before we move on to, uh, to our uh, next, uh, actually this is the second week, to our next concept, which we're getting closer and closer to starting our algebra two component, okay? Today you're going to have a glimpse of the graphing portion and how we're going to be using the different color pens and such for the graphing, okay? So once again, I'm trying to get you used to the different uh, tools that I use, so like that, hopefully it's easy to, uh, to, to get the information from the screen onto your notes and onto your noodle, okay? So with that said, we don't need a Fourier model since you already had one yesterday. We know that one variable equation and inequalities uh, would go in the in the fair model, right? And we know that the definition is an expression equal or not equal. I mean, two expressions equal or not equal to each other. You came up with your own example and non example, and I'm forwarding your screen, so don't freak out. Yeah. All right. From there, I give you four steps to follow, and and we said, okay, the four steps were simplify, isolate, plot, and check. We only did the top two. Today, we're actually going to go through all four because now we're going to be addressing inequalities, okay? So with that said, uh, I'm going to forward one more and you should be at a blank screen. Just lock your toolbar for right now because I'm going to see your notes right after I give you the notes uh, from up here, okay? Uh, and uh, let me see, where is it at? Okay. All right, so we are here. Step, simplify, isolate, plot, and check. All right, y'all ready? Okay, everybody go like this. Bear with me because we're going to go pretty quick. All right, here it goes. Example Q, example Q. Write this down, please. Uh, right there. Oh, my bad. Let it go. Let it go. Example Q. And I want you to write 9 greater than 2x plus one. All right, I'm going to go through all four steps to make sure we got all the process. Ready? Let's do this one together and listen to the steps. Here we go. Step one, can we simplify the left side or the right side? No, we, we can't simplify anymore. Okay, let me draw this down. So that means we need to leave uh, to step two, which is isolate the variable, leave the variable by itself. So if I look at the variable, what do I start with? 
subtracting one from each side. So we end up with eight greater than two X. Okay, so far so good. And from there, it's still not by itself. We need to do what? Divide by two, divide by two. So we end up with four greater than X. Okay? So we just went through step one and two. We checked to see if we can simplify, and then we isolated the variables. Let's graph. I'm going to write the graph over here to the right. Do the same, please, if you fit. All right. So for inequalities, I'm going to do a review right now for the graphing. So writing utensils down, look up to the screen. Hopefully this will help for some of you that got confused with the graphing portion. Okay, here it goes. To graph an inequality, I start with a number line. Writing utensils down, look up to the screen, please. Thank you. And the, the solution that I came up with, that number is what I call DP, or also known as the dividing point. What is it called? Dividing point. Why is that called dividing point, Mr. Q? Because from that point on the number line, I'm going to have two sections, solutions to the inequality or the other section that are not solutions. All right, so how do I know which way to shade, Mr. Q? Well, I need to check for sure so that I know for sure which is the solution. So watch. Uh, I'm going to try using what would be the next number after four? Five. Okay. So I'm going to test five to see if I'm going to shade in that direction. So let's see. I'm going to substitute instead of X. I'm going to substitute the what? Five, because I'm going to try that one. Okay. So let me bring down the four and the greater. So let's read it. Is four greater than five? No. That's not true, which means I'm not going to shade on the right side of the four. So that means I'm going to shade in which direction now? To the left side. What does that mean, Mr. Q? That all of these are my solutions. Am I done graphing? No. I look at the inequality symbol. It's an inequality, but if it doesn't have an equal sign or the bar underneath, I just do an open point like so. Copy that really quick and I'll finish the next part. All right, so let's make sure that we are correct. How do we do that? I'm going to check. All right, so I'm going to take this. According to me, this is a solution. So I'm going to take 4 greater than x. And I'm, I'm going to check any given value within the shaded region. So what would be a number that's in here? Any number. Who can give me a number? One. one. Okay, so one is right here. According to what I shaded, that's a solution. So let me substitute here for one. And then I'm going to read it. Is four greater than one? Yeah, that is true, and that's why it's part of the solution. So what does that mean, Mr. Q? That means that all of this over here is none solutions. That means that if I substitute any numbers to the right of the four, it's going to be false because they're not solutions. All right? And last but not least, now here goes the rigor part where we increase the rigor. I want your answer in a set notation. Okay? Write this down, and I'll explain what it means. Do a bracket. Then you're going to write X bar. And then right after is what the solution that we came up with. According to you, this was a solution and did work. So I'm going to bring it and I'm going to write it here. 4 greater than X. And then you close your bracket. What does all that mean, Mr. Q? Let me write it in words. The set, that's what that bracket means. And then I'm going to circle this and I'm going to write of all X's 
the bar means such that, and then I'm going to write the solution that we came up with, four is greater, greater than x. That's how it reads. Let me read it again. The solution of all x's, is that true? All of these are x's? Yes, because I, I can continue substituting values in there. The solution of all x's such that 4 is greater than x. So all of these I can substitute and 4 will always be greater than all those values. That's what it means. Okay? So, I'm going to forward your screen and I want you to do that problem that's on the screen, please. Oh, sorry. My bad. Let me, let's do it right here. Here we go. Example, super key. And I'm going to give you a 5y plus 2 greater than or equal to negative 23 Michael Jordan. I'm going to leave that up there. There's your problem. See if you can solve and then graph and write your solution set for that. I'll give you some time. Copy and all right, so let's see what we got. I'm going to go through the entire process to make sure we got it. Here it goes. Once again, if you are having difficulty remembering this, this is all your Algebra 1 foundational stuff. That's why I'm going over it tic-tac-toe, one step at a time. Here it goes. Line down the inequality symbol. Can I simplify the left side? No, the right side? No, therefore inverse operations, so I subtract 2, subtract 2, I end up with 5y greater than or equal to negative 25. Hands if you got up to right there. Okay, good. Divide by 5, divide by 5, y is greater than or equal to negative 5. Hands if you got that. And tell your neighbor why I didn't switch the inequality symbol, please. Yeah, I didn't divide by a negative, right? Okay, so let me graph this. Here's my graph. Start with zero. What's my dividing point? My dividing point is negative five. Okay, so that means from there, I need to shade either to the left or to the right. How do I know? Well, I need to check. I'm going to check um, zero. So I'm going to substitute zero instead of y greater than or equal to negative 5. Let's read this. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 5? Yes. Any number to the right of the other number is greater. So since the 0 is to the right of negative 5, it's greater than negative 5. Which means what? This is true. That means which way am I going to shade? I'm going to shade towards the 0 because it is including the 0. So I shade to the right. That means all of these are my solutions, any number in that section. Question, is this an open or closed point? Look at the inequality symbol. It's a closed point because now it has an equal sign. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to shade inside of it to let me know that it's a closed point. All right, so if you get this true, if it does work, you don't need to check anymore. You already checked it. There it is. Okay? So now we just write our solution set. Solution set for all y such that, and then what do I write? y is greater than or equal to negative 5, and then you close your solution set. All right? On your screen, send me a picture of your notes. See what you did. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, all right, so from 
one to five how comfortable do you feel with inequalities? I mean, is it coming back for some of you? Yes, okay, four fives, four fives, three and a half, okay. Um, we'll get there, we're gonna need practice for tonight, okay. However, I do need us to move on to the next part, okay. So here goes a quick review, look up to the screen, just to make sure that we got it. If I give you the inequality negative five less than x plus one, don't copy this, just sit back, relax. I need to do what? Subtract one from each side and I end up with negative six less than x. Is that correct? To graph, there's my number line. I have the zero and then I have my dividing point, which is what? Negative six. If I was to try zero, let's see. Is negative six less than zero? Yes, so that means I'm gonna shade to the right and it's an open point. Look at this one, x plus two less than two. I mean, x plus one less than two. So then subtract one from each side, x is less than one. To graph, my dividing point starts at one, there it is. It's an open point. And if I substitute zero in here, is zero less than one? Yes, that means I'm gonna shade toward the zero. Everybody there so far? And the projector is ready, all right. All right, so pay attention to this part, please. Ready? Because we're about to move into a new type of inequality. That's known as compound inequality. Here it goes. Oh, my goodness. I move this one here, and I combine it with this one. And now I have two and one. You see this right here? This is known as a compound inequality. How many do we have included in that? Two, now it's two inequalities in one, okay? So, copy this one, example one on your notes. We're gonna do this one together. And it reads, solve, graph, check, and write the solution set. And they give us negative five less than x plus one less than two. All right, here we go. Line down the inequality symbol. Well, we have two, Mr. Q, then two lines down. There it is. Here we go. Question, can we simplify the left side, the middle, the right side? No. What's next? Isolate the variable. So we need to leave the variable by itself. So what do we do? Subtract one, but we do that to all sides. Subtract one, subtract one. So this is negative six less than x less than one. You're like, what? That's cool, right? All right, let's graph it. Underneath that, All right, so this is where I'm gonna use my colors. I'm gonna start with green so I can do the right side of this compound inequality. So I'm gonna box x less than one. X less than one. So what's my dividing point? One. All right, I need to check this. What number do you want me to check? Zero, so I'm gonna substitute zero in here. Oh. Sorry, instead of x, it's zero less than one. Is zero less than one? Yeah, so that means I'm gonna shade toward the zero. There it is. Is it an open or close point? Open, because it doesn't have a little bar underneath the equal sign, okay? I'm done with that part. I'm gonna switch to red and I'm gonna do the right side of the compound, this one. What's my dividing point? Negative six. Can I check zero as well? Yeah, so let me substitute zero for x less than negative six. Let's see, is negative, negative six less than zero? Yeah, because it's on the left side of that number, so that means I'm gonna shade towards the zero. Is it an open or closed point? Open, yes, open point, and I'm done with the graphing. 
Let's write our solution set underneath that. Solution set of x such that, write the first dividing point, which is negative 6. Then you're going to write x, then the other dividing point. Close the bracket, arrows always to the left. From 1 to 5, how comfortable are you with this? Let's see, 4 is 5, it's 4 is 5, it's 3 and a half, okay. Let's, do, let's see, let's do another one. On your screen, you have another inequality on your screen, your, on your Chromebook. Example 2, negative 9 less than x minus 10 less than negative 5. Do that one by yourself. I'll leave this one up here really quick. See if you can do that in about 45 seconds. I'll write that up here. Negative 9 less than x minus 10 less than negative 5. This is example 2. Uh, get us started, please, Andrew. Pruitt, what do I do? Uh, get rid of the 10, so I add 10 to all sides. So we get 1 less than x less than 5. Hands if you got that. That is correct. Let's graph this. So I'm going to do the graph. So I'm going to do green for the right side. 5 is right there, my dividing point. Since it doesn't have an equal sign, it's an open point. And then I'm going to test the 0. So let's see, is 0 less than 5? Yes, so I'm going to shade towards the 0. I'm going to use red for the left side. My dividing point is 1. It's an open point because it doesn't have an equal sign. And I'm going to test, uh, should I test 0? Yes. So let's see. Is 1 less than 0? No, that's false. So I'm not going to shade towards the 0. I need to shade to the other side of that number. So let's write our solution set. Solution set of x such that, what's my dividing point? 1. Then I got x. Then I got 5 then arrows to the left, and there you go. All right, are we doing good? Yeah? All right, look at this next one. Don't copy this. Look up. What would be the first thing I do? Add one, add one, add one, right? And then? Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, and so on and so forth. Okay? All right. So, last one for today. Copy this one, example 5. Last one. Don't copy the instructions since you already have the instructions. It reads 8 plus t greater than or equal to 7 or 8 plus t less than 2. You're like, what? Yeah, this is a different kind of graph, but it's also an inequality, compound. So first, I'm going to use red. Can I solve this inequality right here? Look at it. Tell your neighbor what I can do to this one to leave T by itself. Yeah, subtract 8, subtract 8. So I end up with T greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay. Or, can I, I'm going to use green for this one. Can I solve this one? Tell your neighbor what to do for that one. Yeah, minus 8, minus 8. So we end up with t less than negative 6. These are still compounds because it's how many inequalities? 2. All right, so let's graph this. All right, I'm going to start with the green one. Negative 6 is right here. Uh, it's an open point because it doesn't have the equal sign, yes? 
I'm going to test 0. Is 0 less than negative 6? No, so that means I'm not going to shade towards 0. I'm going to shade in the opposite direction. Dividing point for this one is negative 1. Is it a solid or open point? Solid, okay. I'm going to test 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 1? Yes, so I'm going to shade towards 0. And what do you guys notice? That there's an, a gap in between. They're not intersecting. That's why these are called what? Or, and they're compound. Yes? All right, let's see how you do with the home plate, guys. Enjoy your home play. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Video will be uploaded at the end of the day.